Hi guys and welcome to Journey Through to the Centre of the Earth. This is Activity 7 which is the last activity for Year 8 and in this activity we're going to be looking at the rock cycle. Okay, so basically the idea of the rock cycle is the fact that everything on this planet is um, does not remain in the same state all the time. It's going to change and move. Now, you've got to realise that this is going to happen over millions and millions of years but from the beginning of time all the rocks, all the minerals, all the chemical, all the compounds that made up the rocks were here at the beginning of time and as a result they are still here and they, but they're just coming in different shapes and forms. Okay, so what I try to demonstrate here is what the rock cycle really talks about. Now I'm sure you've gone through the rock cycle or a cycle of this event um, probably with the water cycle, you might have looked at the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, etc, etc. All it basically means is that everything is continually being used. Once it's finished or had its purpose, it will go in and go and form something else, etc, etc. So, what we need to understand is, first off, we have um, the first stage of rock, or the, the youngest type of rock that you're likely to get, is the extrusive and intrusive igneous rock. The reason being that it comes from lava, it comes from the molten rock. So this is really the place where the rock has actually been melted down um, from its old form and is actually um, coming out as a, a very new young rock. Now what can then happen to that extrusive um, igneous rock? Well there's a variety of things. It could go back into the earth and it could be remelted and never, never changes. However the next stage that it may undergo is weathering and erosion. Um, so weathering obviously is that the igneous rock is then split up and um, it's then eroded and under the process of running water and gravity, it's going to move down to the lowest part that we've got on the planet, which obviously is the seabed. So we get this transportation process. So you've got this idea that this igneous rock has been broken down and it's being transported with other types of rocks from all over the world and they end up and in the seabed where it's deposited. Now, layers and layers get embedded on the seabed over a period of time until eventually it's all compressed together. Now obviously this compression of this sedimentary, or this sediment, basically is going to produce our second type of rock, which is our sedimentary rock. So in this case, the sedimentary rock is now younger than the extrusive or intrusive rock. Reason being, it, it's only just been formed. The igneous rock has been around for a long period of time. That's hard to try and understand, but when we look at uh, rock aging, probably uh, later on in this course, you'll find that um, uh, that, that's going to be um, something that you're going to have to work out. How do we age rocks? What's the youngest? What's the, what's the oldest? But anyway, for now, the sedimentary rock is now going to be the youngest type of rock because it's made up of the igneous rock which is already formed. Now what can happen to the sedimentary rock? Well, it could all just melt. Um, the igneous rock could just melt and the result is it comes back out through a new volcanic explosion. So we, we then get our intrusive and igneous rock. You see how it cycles around? We've now gone through, as it follows through, down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back out. We see we've got a cycle. However, what can happen is the sedimentary rock could then, through processes of folding or through um, erosion over a period of time, plate tectonics, the water could disappear, that sedimentary rock could then be pushed up. So we then see the sedimentary rock on the, on the surface of the earth. But with time, that still will erode away and erode away and maybe end up down here in that um, with the rock melting. Now, the sedimentary rock or the igneous rock could undergo heat and pressure. Now, obviously, we know that heat and pressure goes to produce the third type of rock, which is metamorphic rock. Now, again, that metamorphic rock can then be pushed up to the surface or it can be melted. Now if it's pushed up to the surface, again we go through weathering and erosion, and the whole thing starts again, or it can be melted and then come up through um, a volcanic eruption. So what you've got to be able to do is to look at this sort of um, diagram and be able to interpret what's going on. Notice we've got our three types of rocks here, our extrusive and intrusive igneous rock, our sedimentary rock, and our metamorphic rock and then we've got the process where they're worn away. So each one of these three rock types could undergo two, three, four, and five, and they can all undergo seven and eight. So 
basically what you just need to be able to understand is what is happening when and where and then the interpretation of this diagram should be fairly easy. Okay, well I hope you find that useful. This probably isn't the last um, unit that we've got at the moment. We'll, we'll probably um, put up another couple of units. One probably looking at how do we interpret um, questions um, for ageing of rocks, um, but that may be later on in the course. But uh, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you found this useful. And do run through this to try and understand the various processes which are going on as one rock changes into another. And um, yeah, because this is the sort of diagram that you might get in a test or an assessment where you literally have to explain what's happened where or fill in the gaps. Um, and so you need a good knowledge. Okay, thank you for watching again. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next unit.